Hi everyone, this is Bonus Grandmaster Sabina Foisher. I'm here at the San Luis Chess Club and you are watching Chess for Nights. And uh, last class I discussed some of my games, some of the bad things that happen in my game, some of the good things that happen in my games. So I'm going to continue with that. I have some examples from my own games um, and hopefully you will enjoy finding them. So this is the first position. What do you think about this position? Who is better? White. Yeah. White. white is better. Yeah. Well, why? Composition. Yeah. Composition? Coordination? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember? That's good. That's good. Yeah. I the piece. Us this position. I did show this position. Yeah. Really? No, I think last position was uh, the one that, it wasn't this one. It was not this one. Shouldn't have been. I did show you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was at the beginning of the class. Okay, if I showed it, that's good. Okay. I don't remember showing it this position. Maybe it was at the end of the class or something, and I clicked on it. Okay. Rook takes the pawn and then mate, okay. But like, if you were looking at the position, you forgot about material, right? You look at king safety, but then you forgot to mention material. Okay, so let's go to the next game then. Did I show you this position too? No, yeah. Okay, because I was sure that that last one was, anyways. Let's see, the, what do you think about this position? Someone who didn't say anything. I mean, we just started, so yeah. You. Yes? Yes? I think it's a draw. It's a draw? Okay. White wins? Okay. How does white win? Oh, someone's asking whose turn it is. That's good. Whose turn do you think it is? Black. It is black's move. Should I give you black? I lost? Well, I know I'm black. Draw, draw. Okay, what's the move with which black uh, makes a draw? F8. King F8. Yeah. And why would that be a draw? King F8? Uh, no, After King F8, black uh, is going to lose, I think, right? What does white do here? F7, king takes F7. <laughs> what do we do with white to win? Come on, guys. Let's have some focus. Bishop H6, king F7. Thank you. Yeah? Here? Bishop to g7. Can I take? No. Why not? Because you promote. You promote. And I'm in the box, no? I will take the pawn the next move. Well, yes, but if you play king f8 here, can we try to think for a better move for white? I think I'm king g6. King g6. And then what's White's idea? Next, yeah, you just want to play Bishop H6, Bishop G7, or Bishop H6, F7, F8, Queen. So in this position, can I take this pawn? No, no, you won't. What do you do now? Bishop takes, and then the pawn will promote. Check, checkmate will come eventually, yeah. So uh, what what is happening? Are you try are you guys trying to make me lose here? Yeah. No. I'm trying Look, like normally this position should be winning for white. Why should this position normally be winning for white? Yeah. But if black is a draw, it's Well, uh, white has two extra pawns and it's a bishop of the same color end game. Depends if white blunders then it'll be a draw. 
if white blunders might be a draw. But now it's black to move. Guys, guys, it's black to move in this position, right? So you need to try to think of a way to make a draw. The good thing that you got already from this position, I was lost earlier, but my opponent pushed these pawns a little bit too fast and thought that, okay, my bishop will be dead, so he will be able to just win because I'll be in Zugzwang, right, in this position. If I move my king, which is what you guys tried to do before, the king just comes to g6, and then the pawn pushes, and then there's check, and then it's over, right? So the idea in this position is, can only be what? Yeah. Well, look, look at this position for a second. The king is, is restricting white's king. And also is restricting this pawn f from pushing. And it, it stops white from playing bishop h6, bishop g7 to trade a bishop. Well, I think you do, um, yeah. bishop g7. Of course. If I take here, what's happening? I said bishop. I know, but someone said this move before. And then queen, you can't stop that, right? If you could give the bishop up uh, away and then win that pawn, of course it would be draw. But if not, you have no chance. You know, even if this pawn was pushed more back and your king would have made it to h7 to blockade it, what was the problem? Why was white still winning? Because the bishop is of the same color of the corner of the pawn, the marginal pawn. So even if the pawn was more pushed back and the king would have made it in front, it would have just made it here, not in the corner. Even if it did in the corner, this bishop would restrict it. So what did we say we play in this position to make a draw? Bishop g7. That's what I said. Very good. This is the move. And the problem that white has now is that if you take, then we take back and then we win the pawn draw. Right, so what about if white just stays here, for example? My opponent played in this position bishop h4, but what would happen if you just stay? Yes? Do we agree? And now what is black's threat? Taking take f6 maybe first and then taking h7? Or do you want to just take in h7? Like if I would play that, would you take in h7 or would you take in f6 first? H7. F6 would make it quite simple draw. If you take king takes h7 here, can white win? Let's try to figure this thing out. Yes. How do you win with white? Let's hear it. Actually, no. No. Okay, let's play. Play with black. Bishop f8. Bishop f8. Okay. So in order for white to win, what does white need to succeed to do? To get the bishop out of the way. To get the bishop out of the way. Okay. How will he do that? Yeah? Bishop e7, okay. So we cannot take, obviously. So we're going to move the bishop out of the way. Bishop f8, bishop takes f8. Yes, white cannot promote at this point. So if white wants to promote, they need to get rid of this bishop from controlling the pawn. Yes. That's nice. But I, nobody forces me to take your bishop, right? I can just move it. Yes. You can do that, certainly, yes. 
So if black makes the mistake of staying with the bishop on this diagonal, how can white win? Oh, yes. Bishop e2. Bishop e2. Bishop e2, you're closing the action of this bishop, and then the pawn will promote. <coughs> so after king d7, black cannot make that mistake. So what about if he goes over here? Hmm? You attack it again. Again, he cannot go there, so he has to go here. And now, what do you do? Now you can try to bring your bishop here to trade it. But as soon as you bring your bishop in here to trade it, black will just move away. And now you cannot promote. And if you try to just move the bishop away to promote, black will move with their bishop on this other diagonal, right? And now you need to do something really, really fun. Yes. Bishop f8, you are again blockading your pawn, so you cannot progress. You need to figure out on which square you need to trade this bishop in order to be able to win this endgame. Which, which one? You can do that, okay. Then we'll try to bring our bishop on this side. Right? because the bishop would take. So now, black switched the position of his king. It's very tricky. These bishop endgames are very tricky. You have to play it th though a really long time in order to try to win with white. And if you do this, black has managed to control the only square on which you can trade this bishop. If you go back to trade it in f8, the problem will be once again that my bishop will move and then I'll just make sure that regardless on which diagonal your bishop will be, I will be on the other one, okay? So going back to the starting position, with bishop endgames of the same color, okay, uh, you have to be very mindful about uh, trading your opponent's bishop and also restricting their king. So in this position, the simplest way to make a draw is like I said, we just take the pawn and then we take. If we want to try to win this, it might take us forever. And probably we will not end up winning it. You need to do something like this if you want to win. So like with the move that we played for black, if we want to try to win, with white, we need to kind of keep black's king restricted there in the corner, but still, even so, it's not so easy. So that's why we do the draw by bishop takes f6. Okay, so in this position, my opponent played bishop h4. What did I do? I only have one good move. Yes? Take the pawn, bishop takes again. It's not stalemate, right? Then and then he promotes. And then you make, then you make. I go back. Yes, and the idea is that now your bishop and your king are stuck to, to, to protecting the pawn. And I will have this little trick of playing bishop g7, bishop h8, and this is how I make a draw. You come back, I come back, and the, you have no way to improve the position of your bishop or king. Yeah, so this is how I was able to save myself in this game, okay? So remember this, um, if you ever get a bishop endgame, especially if you have two extra pawns, you want to try to avoid allowing your opponent to blockade your pawns with their king on the opposite color than your bishop, or the, the bishops in general. Because if they do, and if they still have bishop movement, then it is going to be close to impossible for you to take them from in front of the pawn. Okay, because there is no, no Zugzwang, right? I got lucky here because I was able to just make a bishop move back and forth 
and this pawn wasn't protected. So this is another um, game that I played. And um, my opponent is a strong, strong chess player. I believe he is a grandmaster. And he, um, well, I had this position. I have black here. What is white's threat here? Yeah. To take the bishop. To take the bishop. OK. So it looks like in this position, white is going to be winning some material. I have an extra pawn, though, with black, right? Yeah. OK. What did I do here? Yes, one of you. Yeah? Bishop takes h5. Pawn takes h5. Queen h4. Well, I'm just losing a bishop, and then I try to trade queens. <laughs> I don't think that's the right way to do things. Yes? Um, rook, rook, takes e3. rook takes e3. OK, so I sacrifice an exchange, not a piece. OK. Rook takes. Rook takes back. Guys, don't laugh. It's a good, it's a good alternative, right? So what else? What else can we do here? Remember, I was playing a stronger player, player than myself, so you know, I didn't. If if I lose a piece, I can already resign. It's just kind of bad. Queen h4. Queen takes rook. Queen takes rook here. Queen takes back. Rook e3. Why he takes with the queen though, right? White has three pieces to take back in e3 if you take in e3, right? Why would he take with the only one that loses material for him? <laughs> no, of course not. He will take with the pawn or with the rook. Probably with the rook. I mean, definitely with the rook. Let's get rid of those arrows. Those are not good. But he will take with the rook. So you have some idea of what you want to do. You very well noticed this rook in c7 is only protected by the queen. Some of it didn't say much today. How about on this side? No? OK. Rook takes uh, g4. Rook, what do we think about this move? Well, if he wants to win in material, he has to take back. He has to take back. And the check. If he doesn't take back, I will take here, too. Yeah. Or maybe I will give some check. I take this check and, you save your bishop. and I save my bishop and he plays this. Uh, then you, you it? How 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 <laughs> but he's guys guys please focus. His bishop is protected. If I attack his queen, he will take and his bishop will still be protected. What do I do here? Uh, yes. Nice. Bishop takes h5. I get rid of the attack on my bishop. I take another pawn, and I also distract his queen from protecting his bishop. So if he takes, if he takes, I take. What, what kind of trade? Look at this beautiful trade. I want two pawns, so now I have three extra pawns. I should be able to win this even if it's a super strong player, right? I might be able to take f2 as well, yeah. Got. So he played queen h4 here. He played, he played queen h4 here, and um, now I made another good move, because now both my bishop and my queen are attacked. So I played this move. 
Exactly. I get this check, I win their rook, and then it's over for them. So in this position, my opponent played one more attacking move of my queen. What did I do? Check. This gets really annoying. Check, check, check in. Check in? Where? In which, on which square? Three. No, three. Six. Okay. Yeah. What if he comes back? Then, do, then, uh, then I played this move. What's that for? Trading <laughs> the queens. Trade. Trading the queens because I didn't want to play queen g6. Why I didn't want to play queen g6, for she example? Doesn't. This is not passive. Why I didn't want to play queen g6? Think, think here. My queen is the only one protecting the bishop. This is kind of like a hanging piece because it's only protected by one piece of mine. So what does y do here? Attack your queen. And if I go here? Attack yes? This can be kind of annoying, right? Creepy, too. Creepy, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. But the problem is, you know, how do I save my bishop? So that is the reason why I thought, okay, I will have sufficient extra material to be able to win this game. So I play queen f6, offering the queen trade, and I thought that if they were going to trade, which my opponent didn't do, but if they were going to trade in this position, a lot of people can be tempted not to go into such a position. Why do you think that is? Uh, your king should just be broken yes. the Besides the pawns, I do have uh, three extra pawns here, so I wouldn't mind that. There is something else that I could mind. I could be scared that I might not be winning. Yes. Yeah. I don't worry about that because I can play bishop g6. I don't worry about my king. Yes? But if there was a knight... But there's no knight. But if there was a knight, they could just jump in. It's just because of some pieces that are on the board. What do you guys know about opposite color bishops? Oh. the one that's attacking. What did you say? the one that's attacking. Well, when they're opposite color bishops... You have some difficulty sometimes to win a game because, for example, if you have two passed pawns, the opponent can blockade those pawns on the same color and as their bishop. And you can't trade them. And you can't trade them, exactly. And you can't chase them away from there because they just stay there and move the bishop back and forth. And you cannot push the pawns. And so oftentimes a lot of people choose not to enter bishop endgame, opposite color bishops endgames, because they think, okay, it's a draw. But look. There are a lot of rules in chess that eventually, as you get stronger, they will be broken. I mean, not broken, but like <laughs> you will kind of not respect them. But that's as you get stronger. In the beginning, you have to listen to your coaches, what they tell you. You have to follow that path. And then as you start getting stronger, you start understanding the differences and when rules can be kind of bended a little bit and, and when you're actually winning. Okay, so anyway, so my opponent played bishop g5 and I took here and uh, eventually ended up winning the game. I'll not, I'll not keep going with this because I have way too much material, but I really hope you, you had something to learn from this position. Now, let's look at this position. Just a second. Yeah. White looks much better. Okay, I'm white then. No, wait, wait. King safety first, then material, and let's try to figure out what's going on here. Who is better? White. White. White, because I played with white? No. Okay. My king is very safe. My king is very safe. Okay. There is a file opened on black's king. There's oh. what? Yeah? Uh, diagonally. Diagonally? What diagonally? Open diagonals, true. There's this one, for example. Okay, yeah? Uh, the bishops are right next to each other. So what if they're next to each other? They're more powerful. They unleash the bishops. <laughs> what is black threat? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they double up. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. What is Black's threat in this position? To take the knight. Are you sure? I mean, no. To take something else. Yes, yes, yes. Take the rook. Guys, guys. Okay. Take the rook. I know why my arrow just disappeared. Okay. What do we do here with white? How do we start or continue our attack? If you think I'm attacking. Yes? Check. Check. Bishop f4 check. But when you give this check, he will go to the corner probably. And then what do you do? Now your knight is attacked and the rook is still attacked. So. Yes. Rook to b3. Okay, but what <coughs> threats do we have in this position? The bishop is protected, yeah. You don't really have threats. I wanted to start the attack here. I wanted to bring my key pieces with tempo and everything. What are the weak squares in my opponent's king's position? Yes. Rook c1. But the king is on the b file. I played this move. Yay! Sacrifice. <laughs> Exchange sacrifice. So I didn't want to waste time moving my rook. And then my opponent took back, right? Yeah. Yes. Can I have a prediction on the following two moves? Okay. For what So first, white. Ouch. Ouch. Look at that. Look at this move for a second. <laughs> Queen to be. Guys. Well, that, that's part of my strategy. And then no, oh, no. Look on the entire ball. board. I know, but you missed something. You missed oh, something. <laughs> the bishop takes. Uh, well, you're going to do a queen. Queen b3. <laughs> Let's be nice to the, the other people in class. Kids. Uh, the kids. But I'm attacking, guys. In attack, do you trade queens? No. Never. <coughs> Only if you don't see a good follow-up that will lead to mate. Yes. A knight d5. So we obviously have this discovery that can happen. So where do we move our knight? D5. D5. I cannot go here. Why I cannot go here? Bishop f4. But he can do this move, unfortunately, for you guys. Yes? Better, better than that. Um, bishop c3. I think I can just. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. Not. Yeah, I can take, right? Yes, 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 yes. One second, one second. Bishop f4 indeed looks really great, but black has a defense. Yes. Uh, can you go back to when it was the But let's let's do this. Sure. Uh, and when black took the knight, you you could have just forked like take the knight on c seven and four. I agree with you. But the thing is I, I take and then you know, I already sacrificed an exchange with white. So all you're going to do with white now is get your exchange back. And me as black, I have an extra pawn in the end. So after all, this doesn't really help you to win the game, right? Because you'll stay with the pawn down. 
bishop f4 here allows black to do something. Again, because if you consider that white has sacrificed an exchange in the start of the position, now they can make this move. You take the queen, because, and now they take your queen, and how is the material like once again? You take back with something. Black still has an extra pawn. Okay, so we need to try to find something better than that. So I played knight b5. What? What's the follow-up? Like, what's my idea? So I'm attacking the queen. I'm also, if you realize, I'm keeping all these three squares controlled so the queen cannot go on any of those squares. Trap the queen. Let's see. Let's see, though. Queen b2 is what my opponent played. What was the idea to have the knight placed in b5, guys? What was the idea? Yes. Never mind. Do it. Be confident. What's the weakness? What's the weakness in Black's King's position? That's a nice move. I don't know why I didn't play it immediately. I wanted to give the check first. Because after this check, uh, where do you go with the king? In the corner. In the corner. If you go here, what's happening? And then? It's not so simple. It's not so simple. Let's, let's think again. What do we do here with white in this position? Take in A7. I heard that before. Something else. What do you think about this move, maybe? Uh, not really good. Why not? I have a big threat. Exactly. I have a big threat. Knight a7 checkmate because I'm discovering my queen. Oh. Yeah. Hey, uh, and I'm also, I'm also bringing a new piece to attack. You cannot mate with two pieces alone. I mean, sometimes you can, okay. Yeah, you can. But like two minor pieces is usually hard to, to mate with two minor pieces. So we need our queen to attack. And then we're bringing our rook here too. And white will eventually mate or win a bunch of material. So my opponent went king eight after bishop f4, king eight. Okay. What did I do? A4. Pawn A4? Queen. Queen. You need to mention which piece is going, otherwise people will think. Pawn. I see. <coughs> A6. Oh. Yes. Um, C7. King A7. So that I avoid that discovery. Because if I go here, what's happening? Um, then you Don't I want to try or to... even better, checkmate by... Like, takes a6, uh, king to a8, and then knight to c5, mate. Mate. Okay. So my opponent played king a7. Okay. Queen takes white pawn, check. Pawn takes white queen. Wait, what? <laughs> it is white to move. Oh. oh. <laughs> what do we do? <coughs> Bishop takes, guys. We want to play. We want to take here checkmate, but it's not right now because there's a pawn. But if we take here first, then that's, can you imagine if black needs to, to, to choose to make this move, bringing the king so much out, then it's definitely not so great for them. If they would have taken...
Okay, so they play king b6. Okay, okay. What do we do now? Yes. Yes. Uh, queen b5. Queen takes. <coughs> yes. Sorry. Yes. The perfect time. Now take the pawn. <laughs> this one? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> yes. What's your threat after you take it? Checkmate. So my opponent played this to stop the checkmate. And then you move here and push it back. There are a lot of ways that you can do this. I play rook d1 actually. He took my bishop and then I took. So he gave me this check, rook d1 back. And then I played it. I, I continued this way. I, I was quite happy with this position because the king is just, yeah. Let's see this beauty. I mean, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. Well, I hope so. I sure hope so. Who is better here? Uh, white. White is better. No, clearly black is better. He has the far superior minor piece. Yes, black is clearly better. We have a knight in this outpost. This bishop is restricted by its own pawns, a lot of them. Can, the can do. Excuse me? Can we see the white point of view so we can see like, how bad the white is? Sure, if it helps you. Oh, yeah, it does seem like it's a. Uh, yeah. You should be able to evaluate the position regardless of whose view you are seeing, okay? Because what are the characteristics that we are using to evaluate the position before we decide what to do? Oh, the king structure. First, you look at king safety. Then you look at material. Yes, you're looking at imbalances in a position, yeah. But you start with king safety, then you look at the material. Then you look at pawn structure. So in pawn structure, you have to look at space, center, and weaknesses. Right? Exactly. Pawn islands, uh, double pawns, backward pawns, isolated pawns. Backward pawns? Pawns that are like behind from like an. an um Is A2 a backward pawn? No, they have to be on an open file. So, for example, if black's pawn instead of being in A6 would have been in B4, it would make the pawn in A2 a backwards pawn. It's a pawn that's the end of a chain and it is on a semi open file from the opponent's side. So right now, this pawn d6, for example, is a backwards pawn for black. Because the d file is open. But look, just because it's backwards, it doesn't necessarily mean it's weak too. OK? So you can, of course, consider them, but you need to see whether they're really weak and they're easily attacked by the opponent's pieces. If they're not, then they're not really weak. They're just fake weak. Fake. Seriously, I mean, you can just count it that way. Anyway, so in this position, since black is so much better, what do we do here with black? To, to improve our position, like to try to win on the spot. Yes, pushing the A pawn would be a nice idea if you are not having some tactical way to win here. Serious. Let's be serious for a couple more minutes. White's bishop is trapped. Yes. Yeah, so what do we do? G4, guys. G4. Look at this beautiful move. What was I... Queen takes e4, and it's check bishop. Can you play king h3? Uh, no. 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 Then you should queen h1 check. 
It's not a checkmate. Why it would be a draw? Your knight is much stronger. You can never win any of my pawns. What should we do here to win with black? We win this yeah, pawn in two moves. My opponent played this and then king g5. Wow. And now? And then now take off the rook. No, uh, why do you check him? That's f3? I don't King h4, I played. The idea is, after g4, although white has put another pawn on white, he's trying to bring his king and restrict mine from entering. So if in this position I push, I make the move king h4, what does he do? He's in somewhat of a zugzwang. Yeah, the bishop will never be able to move from there because it needs to stay to protect the pawn. And so if you play king g2, what is my plan now with black to win? Yes. I pushed a5 first, and then I took, but like, obviously, that is a nice idea. Anyways, very well done. So what about if in this position, in the start, he plays this move? Take it. Take what? What is it? Are you winning the king and pawn end game? No, you can actually just take the pawn. Why don't you just take the pawn? Very simple. Take the pawn first and then you can trade, no? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Makes a little bit more sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you win, duh. What is the axe? What? White to move in oh. this next position. Exactly, very well. In this position, uh, I have white, and I was playing this in a match between USA and India. And um, I had, I was hoping I would win. I had a really good, I played a really good game. I have an extra pawn here with white, right? So, what do you think I should do here? So in the game, my opponent took, right? Yeah, seven. Because I just attacked the bishop. So in this position, we need to decide what to do with white. Now the material is equal. I have a knight versus a bishop. Certainly, I have the a pawn, which is doing, which should help me, right? It's a further away past pawn. But uh, my, bish my rook in a7 is attacked, so I need to choose where I'm going to move it and what my continuation will be. I can play what? If I manage to trade, yes, if I manage to trade my rooks and my knight for the bishop, I should be able to win the king and pawn endgame because my pawn is further away, so by the time black goes to grab that pawn, my king will come and win the yeah. end game. But it's not so simple to get that right now, right? My king is, is cut on the third rank, although her king is cut too. But my rook is attacked, so I cannot keep it on seventh rank, or can I? Yeah. No, my rook is attacked. Rookie seven checking d eight. Rook takes a six. That's what I thought. I thought I would just go take and then I have some chance to win that end game. But in this position, white can do something much better than that, which I completely missed to think about. 
And what is the follow-up after rook a8 check? Uh, pawn, uh, uh, seven, nine, no, nine, 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 Knight e4, uh, knight e5, king there, knight c4. <laughs> and now white should be winning. So instead of doing that, I messed up. I ended up giving this check and I took the pawn because I thought, okay, I will have an extra pawn. I can always go back, rook a6, and. I'm sorry? She cannot take my A pawn because uh, I take her bishop. Oh. So she played bishop g1 intermediate move first though. She? Yeah, it was a she. I told you we played the match between, it was a uh, women's world team championship. So it was USA versus India. Wait, and wait, are USA win? I don't remember what we did that match. I think we drew the match. I think we drew it. And if I had won, we would have won the match. Well, but, won. so it was tough. It was tough. If and if the rooks get traded now? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I kept playing, I kept trying, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to win this this position. So, if you miss this kind of pattern, it's bad. So, I thought I would end today's lesson with. Um, Something that I missed because um, I know how much you enjoyed last class, the fact that I showed you a lot of my losses. And um, you know, w basically what I wanted to, to show in these, these lessons is that you, know, you don't need to be ashamed of your losses if you, or misses, like if you miss, like here. Instead of uh, you know, winning the game, I ended up making a draw. And you just need to to always be uh, ready to look at your mistakes and see the positive side of them and then try to improve from that. So um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed my wins today. Mostly it was my wins, right? And um, yeah, it was good to have you here. Thank you.